All right, what's up everyone? I'm here in the garage today, so I'm uh, still have the rotating assembly at the machine shop being rebalanced with the uh, new Molnar rods. So I decided to get out here and get the uh, the main bearings put into the block and torqued so that uh, I can check the uh, main bearing oil clearances. So that's one thing, one last thing I have to do whenever I get the rotating assembly back. So um, I've got the, the main bearing assemblies, or main bearings set out here on the table. I wanted to talk a little bit about them before I start putting them in the block. So I had a, I had a couple of people ask some questions about me doing a detailed assembly of the engine. So I'm gonna to try to be as specific and detailed about this as I can. So here are the main bearings. Um, starting off with the thrust bearings. So here's the top thrust bearing I already have in the cap. And that's the standard uh, Texan block thrust bearing. So one thing that I did with the Texan block is you can order a, a separate set of bearings and get a fully flanged upper bearing, thrust bearing. So I don't have the bearing over here with me, but normally these uh, thrust bearings on the mod motors are a two-piece design. So you've got almost like a regular, a regular main bearing that goes in the block, and then you have a thrust washer. So this part of the bearing, this flanged part here, is that isn't actually part of that bearing. It's a separate piece that you put in, and it's not as strong as this one piece bearing. Also, you can see there's a hole I've already drilled in the face of this bearing. That's just a modification I did to uh, feed the face of the bearing, the thrust face with oil. So, and I'll read the part number for this as well. So you have to order a whole set of bearings just to get this one bearing, but this is a lot stronger design. So as you can see, there's the number. It's uh, F5219U, and the SI stands for their uh, stock line, stock replacement line of bearings. And as you can see, it's a uh, STD, which is, stands for standard thickness. So another important thing whenever you're putting these bearings into the block, and it's kind of, if you have any common sense, you won't screw it up, but you never know. Um, there's an upper bearing, or I'm sorry, an upper bearing and a lower bearing. And you'll see when we move over to the block with this upper bearing has these slots in it here to push oil to the face of the bearing here. And those are from the oil galleys that are in the block. And then as you can see, the lower bearing does not have that. And then I'm not sure if the part number actually says if it's an upper or lower. We'll look and see. Yeah, so it doesn't. So you just have to make sure that you put these in the right spots. So we'll move over here and start installing these things in the block. All right, so I got the block already pulled out. It's cleaned up. I've already put the uh, ARP main studs in it, back in it, clean them up, clean all the oil and old Molly lube and stuff that was on them off. So nice and clean. Try to set this tripod up so I can show you guys what's going on. All right. So another important part of putting either a main bearing or a rod bearing into an engine is that you want to ensure that the back side of the bearing is as clean, perfectly clean. You don't want to have any trash on it because what that'll do is that'll skew your measurements. It'll mess up your oil clearance. So you want to take a lint free. These are like a heavy duty shop tile. They're they don't really leave any lint behind. That's another thing is when you're building an engine, you want to make sure that you have a rag or cloths that aren't going to leave behind lint because that's trash that you definitely don't want to want to be inside the engine. So clean the back of this, the shell of the bearing. And then also you want to move over and clean the part of the block that the bearing is going to sit in. Make sure there's no trash on it.
I've already cleaned this up, but I'm going to do it again just for good measure. So I'll go ahead and install the uh, thrust bearing. This uh, thrust bearing, because it's out of an air kit, does not have a tang on it. And I'll show you guys the tang here in a second when I install one of the other main bearings. But those are what you use to align the bearing in the uh, in the block. So we'll go ahead and install this thrust bearing. Also, another thing. So the uh, hole that I drilled right here is facing towards the back of the engine. Because this thrust face right here is the one that sees the most... The most... Um, this part right here sees the most uh, pressure and the crank is pushing against the back of this bearing from the transmission. So this gets the most stress put on it, is this side of the thrust bearing. Install it in the block, make sure that it's even. There it is. Make sure that it's even on the sides here. And if it's not perfect, it'll straighten itself up whenever you put the top cap on. Let's see if I can get a better angle for y'all. So I've already got the lower thrust bearing in the cap here. And as you can see, this is the tang I was talking about earlier, right here. And that's what you use to align this bearing. Once again, make sure it's even on the sides here. And then, if you look on this cap, the top of this cap, it has an arrow. That arrow faces towards the front of the engine. As you can also see here, that this uh, cap already has a number stamped on it for number five. So it's the number five main bearing cap. So go ahead and put that on the studs. Seat it. One thing I have that I use to seat these with is a uh, a saw faced hammer here. It's got plastic on the ends of it. I use that to seat the bearing cap. So that's seated. I'll go through and start installing the others. Another thing I like to do to make sure that these bearing, where the bearing sits at is uh, clean is I'll take a rag and I'll put a little bit of carburetor cleaner on the rag and wipe it down. And I'll do the same on the cap here. Make sure it's nice and clean. And the same on the backs of the bearings as well. Cleanliness is an absolute must whenever you're building an engine. Wipe the back of the top bearing down. Once again, I know this is the top bearing because it has the openings for the oil galleys on the block. This is a pretty tedious process. You just have to be patient with it and take your time because you don't want to put all this stuff together and then have not cleaned something good enough or 
rushed and, and messed something up, and then now you're having to do twice the work. So just take your time and be patient with it. So I've got the tang right there on the bearing. I'm gonna install it in the portion of the block that has the cutout for the tang. So there you can see that I've got the uh, the top bearing put in. It's lined up with its tang, ready to go. So I'll start working on the, the bottom bearing and cap. You can see how dirty these things are, and how much junk I'm getting off of them when I clean them. Sit that down, clean the bearing cap again just to make sure it's clean. Once again, there's a tang that you use to line up the bearing with. There it is, installed and ready to go. Look at my arrow, and then install that towards the front of the engine. Put the cap in, take my hammer, and seat the cap. I will continue on with the, uh, the other three. Okay, so uh, all the main bearings are installed. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my uh, ARP Molly Lube and I'm gonna lube up the threads of these main studs. I'm gonna get my washers and nuts for these studs and and uh, get them put on there and then torque tor these down to the ARP torque specifications to get the uh, bearings crushed and sealed inside the spots where they ride at and then uh, I'll be able to check the uh, the old clearances. All right, so a lot of times whenever you buy ARP main studs, anything ARP, it comes with its own lubricant. I went ahead and bought, since I do this pretty often, um, I went ahead and bought a big thing of ARP Ultra Torque uh, assembly, what is this called? Fastener Assembly Lubricant. So what you do with this is you lubricate the threads of the stud and you lubricate lubricate the uh the face of the the face right here of the nut. So what that does is uh all torque is is a measure of friction. So you want a repeatable torque on all your bolts. And this is the stuff that's going to to get you a, a repeatable torque. So you have an, uh, the right amount of torque on all of your bolts. Okay, so I got the uh, main stud nut, nuts and everything, bearings and all that installed. So now I'm going to uh, torque all the main studs down. So what that'll do is that's gonna um, 
it's going to crush these bearings and get them fitting the way that they're supposed to fit so that whenever I get the uh, dial bore gauge and the I can get it in there and check the uh, oil clearance, uh, the bearing oil clearance. So, um, ARP recommends that the M8s are torqued to 25 foot pounds and the M10s, which are the, the bigger studs, are torqued to 60 foot pounds in three equal steps. So, I'm going to do that process and the block should be ready to uh, have the main bearing uh, oil clearances checked. Also, if you're doing a build like this, I recommend uh, going out to your part, local auto parts store or wherever and getting one of these Haynes repair manuals. It's a Ford Mustang 1994 through 2004. And you have a lot of the, the tightening sequences and stuff that you need in this book and uh, clearances and whatnot. So I've got this uh, opened up so I can look at the sequence for the, uh, the, for torquing the main, uh, the main caps.
All right, so there you have it. The, uh, there's also side bolts and uh, I forget what else they call them. I think they call them jack screws that go on the sides of these, uh, of the sides of the block here. I'm not gonna put those in because I don't feel that those affect the oil clearance. They're more of a side support for the block and the main caps. So I'm gonna measure without putting those in first and then I might actually, I don't know yet, I may actually put them in and see if the measurements change. So at this point, the main, uh, the main bearings are ready to be checked for the uh, for oil clearance. So that'll be the next step.